Welcome to section 4.2.4 part 2. We're going to work problem 95 um, part C through E. We're not going to do all of them. I just want to give you some hints that might help you as you look at these. As I told you my scanner's broken so we're going to have to look at some of these graphs just straight out of the book and then we have to zoom and do some other things like that. Okay, here is the first one that you had and it gave you this graph right here. Now, if I'm going to find or compare these two, they want to know when these two are going to have the same amount of money. Well, the method I prefer, because these are growing so slowly, you can see this one's eventually going to hit that, but where? Somewhere way in the future. Rather than do that, I want to use the equal values method, and to do that, I have to write a rule. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the starting points. My two rules are going to have a form kind of like this where I'm going to put my starting point here and my rate of change here. Let's see. The starting point on this first one, if you have the book it'll be easier, starting point is 200 and 70. Now I can use these points to find the rate of change or the growth triangle. I notice that my x's are going from 0 to 1, so I know from here to here is only 1 over, and then I know going up it's going from 270 to 280. So if I go from 280, 270 to 280, I know that I went up by 10, so my rate is 10x. On the next one, I notice that my starting point is not at 0, it's at 10. So I'm going to write that in my rule plus 10. And my rate of change. Well, my rate of change goes over from 0 to 1, so that's a change of 1. If I were drawing that triangle, it would look something like this. It went over 1, and then it went from 10 to 25. And the change from 10 to 25 means that that has to be 15. See that there? 10 to 25. Now, if I put this, I can now solve this by writing it out, this part equal to that part, 10x plus 270 equals 15x plus 10. I'm going to solve it for x then plug the x value back into either this one or this one, or both if I really want to check it, to find y. Okay, that was part C. And part D, they give us some various pieces of information. Um, once again, I'm going to try to write rules for these. And if I write rules for them, Okay, tells me that these describe the same situation. I can get my starting points I can get my starting points from these graphs. Let's look at A first. This is line A. It starts at 43. Line B starts at negative 2. I'm just going to write that as minus 2 because that's what plus negative 2 is. Now it doesn't give me the rate of change here and so I've got to have some way to calculate the rate. And so I look at the table and I see for every 1 the x goes up on line A the y is going down by 4. Let's see if that happens again. 1x 4 on the y. So the rate of change is going down by 4. Let's look at this other table. It goes down 1, I mean goes up 1 for the x and it goes up 6 for the y. So that is a change of 6. And so that gives me my two rules and with those two rules I'd now set this part equal to that part. 
negative 4x plus 43 equals 6x minus 2. You are not done, but this should give you some help getting started. If you get all your x's and solve for x, then plug your x back in either here or here, you should be able to figure out the y. Okay, the last one, they gave us this graph here. And I'm not sure this is going to focus. Good. That's nice. Okay. And they want us to determine how much a video cost. How much one video cost and how many more videos can she rent? Well, she's going to be able to rent videos till she runs out of money. This has dollars left on her video card. And so when she crosses this line, that would be zero. But they haven't put any scale here. They haven't really given us much information here. So this is what we're going to do. They do tell us that this change right here is a change of 4. So if I were drawing a growth triangle here, I know that going here, this goes up by 4. Now I know that I, my numbers here for that same section are going to go from 8, 98 to 84. So I'm basically going from this point of 98 right here to 84, and that would be um, change of 14. I'm going down, so I'm going to put that as negative 14. And remember that when we write our slope or rate fraction, the top number is the vertical change, and the bottom number is the horizontal change. So the vertical change was negative 14. The horizontal change was 4. And let's see, what does that give us? That'll reduce to negative 7 halves, or one I recognize, negative 3.5. So it looks like for every unit, or every one she's renting, cost her three dollars and fifty cents because that's how much is being taken out of her account well the last let's see how many more videos can she rent at this point she has eighty four dollars so what i'm going to do is one way is i could take eighty four and i could see how many three point fives would fit into eighty four because that's how much money she has left it's going down by 3.5 each time. Um, I don't really have the way to write the rule that I can see quickly. And so I'm just going to say 3.5. I'm going to divide 84 by 3.5. I'm doing it on the calculator. And I get that she's going to have 24. So she has 24 more rentals. But she has $84 left. And the amount per video is $3.50. I hope this helps and uh, good luck with it.